You're listening to Release Your Resistance with Bex Beltran, Episode 7. Welcome to Release Your Resistance. This is Bex. The only reason why any of us don't have what we want in life is because of our own resistance. Right now, I'm learning how to recognize and release my resistance, and this podcast tells you how you can release your resistance so that you can live the exact life that you want. Today's episode has some extras. Make sure to listen all the way to the end because I have a few announcements for you. But for now, let's talk about Zumba. Do you ever see learning opportunities in everyday experiences and notice lessons in unexpected places? I think of my Zumba practice as my religion, my meditation, and my workout. So I think about it a lot. And I realized I've learned some pretty valuable life lessons that have nothing to do with dancing or music. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say Zumba changed my life. It sounds funny, but Zumba class is basically a spiritual experience for me. It's when I get some of my best ideas. It's when I get clarity. I think moving my body is helpful and keeps me young. And as I think back over how I've changed and what I believe now, I see so many realizations I learned or became aware of either during my workout or because of it. So here are the top five lessons I have learned so far from Zumba. My first experience with Zumba started way before I ever stepped into my first class. About 10 years ago, I was working on a degree program and I got out of track with my own class group. So when I joined a new group, all the learning teams had already been formed and I had to join an existing established team. Luckily, the smallest team was actually a duo, so it made perfect sense for me to join them as the third wheel. And even more luckily, these two friendly classmates were the prettiest, most fun ladies in the whole class. So I was so glad I got to join them instead of some of the more tired or boring teams. It turns out these two ladies both taught Zumba at a gym near my house and usually came to our class in cute workout clothes. When they found out that I lived near their gym, they encouraged me to try out Zumba or at least come to the gym to work out. So after a few weeks, I did go to the gym for a trial membership. I wasn't that interested in Zumba. It sounded weird to me. And based on the name and their description of what it was, it didn't sound like it was for me at all. But I was interested in joining a gym and I liked that they personally recommended their gym and that they worked there. So I joined the gym and I signed up for personal training and I took some of the other non-Zumba classes and I started going pretty regularly. I would go after work and spend some time on the elliptical or the bike with my headphones. And since the elliptical machines and bikes were facing the group fitness studio, I could watch the classes while I was working out. And I noticed the Zumba class. I watched them dance and twirl and wave their arms all around in sync. And I saw them jump and clap on the beat. And I noticed the fun, spunky attitude that the teacher and some of the students sometimes had. And as I watched, I thought it looked like a lot of fun. And I didn't think it was for me. But finally, after watching them have so much fun for so many weeks, I just decided to try it out for myself instead of watching from the outside looking in. And I was hooked. I loved it. And so for almost the last decade, I have enjoyed this amazing experience that I almost didn't even try because I assumed it wasn't for me. The lesson here is I can stay on the outside looking in, doing what I'm comfortable with and what I know, or if something is catching my interest, I can just try it to see if I like it. Maybe it will change my life. Isn't it interesting to think how this lesson could apply to so many things? What's something that you're on the outside of looking in right now and thinking it looks fun or interesting and you might like it, but you just haven't tried it yet? What if you did go ahead and give it a try? During those first few months of getting into Zumba, it was really important to me to be in step, to do the arm motions correctly, and to go in the same direction as the class when we traveled or turned. And as we were dancing, I would notice other people in the class. Some people were really good. They had all the choreography down. They were able to add a little style and flair as they danced and moved. They looked amazing. And I noticed other people who were never on the beat, 
who always seemed to be a step behind, who went left when the class was going right, and I compared myself to all of them. I wanted to be as good and as graceful and as smooth as my classmates who look like professional dancers. And I remember thinking, hmm, I'm doing better than her or ooh, those two, when I noticed class members who were doing their own thing. In fact, I remember thinking really judgy thoughts about them like, can they even see the teacher? This move happens like four times during the song. Can't they get it during the fourth time? Or they've been coming to this class for over two months. They still don't know the steps. Not cool, right? But that's what I was doing. I was noticing the other dancers watching themselves in the mirror and seeing them making their music video faces at themselves. And I wondered, what were they thinking? I was comparing myself to women who just joined for the very first time and noticing that I had caught on faster during my first class. I was so involved in everyone else's business during those early classes and I didn't even know that I was. Around the same time, I loved scrolling through Pinterest and seeing all the motivational phrases and quotes graphics. One of the quotes I saw that really stuck out to me was, comparison is the thief of joy. And when I thought about that phrase during Zumba, I recognized that it was true. I was robbing myself of my own joy during my workout by noticing other people and thinking about them and putting myself on a ruler next to them and deciding if I was better or if they were better. It wasn't great. It took the joy right out of it. So I started reminding myself of that phrase whenever I caught myself comparing, like, Ooh, look at how she's not even extending her, oh, comparison is the thief of joy. Or how does she do that little kick when she shuffles to the, oh, comparison is the thief of joy. And it worked. I stopped comparing myself. And once I stopped comparing, my mind had so much more time and space during Zumba to do so many other great things for me. Suddenly, I had time to solve problems and to think of metaphors and to daydream and to make mental lists. So many great things. And that habit that I cultivated for myself specifically during that one hour class every day spilled over to other areas in my life when I noticed myself judging other people. That's not joyful at all. That's not helpful. There's no upside and it's none of my business. The lesson here that I practiced during Zumba but I can now use anywhere is that comparison really is the thief of joy. And a little side note to this lesson in case it wasn't obvious, that is comparing both up and down. I really didn't feel any joy when I thought I was better than my classmates. So is there something in your life right now that could be more joyful for you, but that's not because you imagine that you're more deserving than someone else? About two years later, I had been going to the gym semi-regularly and tried a lot of different programs there. They had a really fun boot camp one summer and my friend and I loved going to two Tuesday night barbell with Julie. We also had a favorite Wednesday night circuit workout where we always got in trouble for talking too much. I still mixed Zumba in and I still did the elliptical, but I had probably fallen out of the habit of a frequent routine. And as the days and weeks went on, my gym friend and I would frequently make excuses for not going. And if she didn't go, I probably wouldn't go either. In my non-gym life, I was going through a little bit of a crisis. My job was in major upheaval and uncertainty, and I was feeling pretty hopeless hopeless and purposeless in general. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was already a few levels deep into a spiral. I don't remember what it was, but something made me notice that the gym Zumba schedule had a Zumba class each day for the next five days at times that I could actually go. So I decided to make a goal for myself to go to five days of Zumba in a row. I don't remember if I had a purpose or a reason for that goal or what I expected it to do for me, but it was life-changing. Those Those five days turned everything around for me. When I look back at why, I think it must have been three main things. The daily influx of dopamine over a five-day period from a great cardio workout to loud music, the rush of setting a goal and achieving it, and the reconnection with something that I loved and that made me happy. Those five days got me back onto a regular Zumba schedule, and I had a new outlook about my work situation, and I got motivated to do other fun, engaging projects. I get so many lessons and reminders for myself out of this one little story, even though I can't even remember most of the specific details about what I did after those five days. But what I do remember is the feeling of momentum that I got, and I learned 
momentum works. This is such a valuable lesson because if I ever find myself just past the entry point of even the most gradually declining spiral, I can look for a quick win with another five-day goal or a way to reconnect with something that brings me joy or something that will flood my system with the good kind of dopamine. Do you know what kinds of activities kick off momentum for you? Do you have a mental list of joyful things to go back to when you feel yourself slipping? If you're keeping track of the countdown, we are down to the fourth lesson I've learned from Zumba, and it is... I don't need to stay in a situation that is not serving me. As much as I love my dance addiction, it's not always rainbows and daisies. In fact, sometimes it is literally the opposite. Sometimes people have very strong body odor, and I am very sensitive to smell. Or sometimes a class is just off for me. Maybe I don't like the teacher's style, or maybe the volume is too high and I didn't bring my earplugs, or maybe the class is just too crowded and people are standing too close to me. Whatever it is that's taking me away from my ideal Zumba experience, I always give myself permission to leave if I want to. This permission is so liberating. So if I'm dancing and smelling someone and it's driving me crazy, I know I can stay and see if my mind adjusts and see if I can get into my zone, but I don't have to. I can just leave without guilt and without regret and it's fine. And sometimes I end up staying for the whole class and I have an okay class. And sometimes I end up leaving. This is such a great reminder for me about other things in my life that I want to do or think I should do. I always have permission to do whatever I want in any situation. I can stay, I can adjust, I can leave. Can you relate to this? Do you give yourself permission in any situation to stay, to adjust your thinking, and to leave if you want to? Can you imagine staying in a situation that felt uncomfortable just to see what would happen? Can you think about intentionally adjusting your thinking to something different even when your initial thought was, I don't want to do this? Would you walk out of a relationship, a job, or even just a party if it wasn't right for you? Okay, the fifth lesson I've learned from Zumba is that seasons change and it's fine. I'm a creature of habit. I thrive in routine. And when I find something I like, I just commit to it on autopilot and enjoy the ride. So I had been going to my classes at the gym for a few years. I had my favorite teachers and my favorite classes. I scheduled all of my free time around those classes so that I wouldn't miss them. I was friendly with the other regulars and life was good. And then one day in December, as my favorite teacher was making some of her pre-class announcements, I heard something that piqued my interest. She was saying something about, be on the lookout for more information. We'll be sharing more as we know more and make sure you're on the list. I was like, what's happening? And this expression of not wanting to be the bearer of bad news came over her. And she said, you didn't get the letter? The gym is closing in January. I don't think the phrase, there's no crying in Zumba is a real expression, but that is the phrase I kept repeating to myself in my mind as I tried to hold back the tears as I danced that morning. This was just about six months after my five-day Zumba life-changing experience, and I had tied so many benefits back to these classes with these instructors at this gym. I felt heartbroken, and I literally had to wipe my eyes multiple times while tapping, clapping, and twirling over the next few weeks. Once the gym closed, I was a little lost, and I didn't have a place to go dance or a weekly class schedule anymore. But over the next few weeks, I tried out a few different places. I found an amazing teacher at a different gym for my Saturday morning class, and it started an hour earlier than my previous Saturday morning class, and I was surprised to discover that actually worked out so much better for my weekend. Within a few months, I finally got the long-awaited email from the favorite teacher who had broken the news to me. She let us all know where she was now teaching, so I signed up there and happily greeted a few of the other familiar regulars. And in the past few years, I have followed that teacher to a few different gyms, but now I've lost touch with her, and my other Saturday morning teacher ended up having a baby a year later. So even though there's no crying in Zumba, I cried again during our last class together. As sad as I was about getting kicked out of my Zumba birthplace, what it taught me is that seasons change and it's fine. Now as instructors move on or as gyms change their class schedules or as my own life schedules change, I know I can just look for the next gym, the next instructor, and try out a new class. And it reminds me that even though this workout is so important and so valuable to me right now, it doesn't always have to be. Maybe 10 years from now, you'll find me doing the reggaeton to a pitbull song. Or maybe I'll be doing something completely different. Either way, it's fine. I learned this lesson through Zumba, which in the grand scheme of things may be pretty insignificant. It's just a workout, right? But knowing that seasons change and it's fine can get me through heartbreak 
and loss and disappointment. It reminds me that I don't know what the future holds and I don't know what's around the corner. And even with all my intention and all my planning, I really don't know what's next for me. But I do know I will always be fine. When I started putting this episode together, I actually came up with 10 lessons I've learned from Zumba. So I could go on and on. But for now, these are the five lessons that I wanted to share with you. Number one, I can stay on the outside looking in and I can just go ahead and go on in and try it for myself if something is calling to me. It might turn out to be life-changing. Number two, comparison really is the thief of joy. Number three, momentum works. Number four, I don't need to stay in a situation that's not serving me. And number five, seasons change and it's fine. Even though this episode is supposedly all about Zumba, it's not about that at all. It's a metaphor for life. And this is making me wonder, what other lessons can I find in everyday life experiences? I'm on the lookout, and maybe as I encounter them, I'll share them with you. In fact, I have been thinking of starting some kind of resistance training, since apparently learning all about resistance is my thing this year. I wonder what I'll learn from that. Remember before the episode started, I said I had some announcements for you? Well, here they are. First... I just wanted to thank you for hanging out with me every Friday this month. Can you believe we've had our weekly conversations together for a full month now? I have loved making these episodes for you, and I have appreciated all the amazing comments, feedback, and support. Thank you so much. I also want to thank my magnificent launch squad, who helped support and encourage me as I was preparing to launch the podcast at the beginning of the year. We had a lunch lunch to celebrate after the first three episodes went live, and I am so happy that everyone came out to celebrate and spend time together. We had the most perfect weather that day and the most perfect sponsors for the lunch. So I want to give a special shout out to Kelly and Yvonne. Kelly James can answer all your mortgage and home loan questions. She's with Prime Lending. And Yvonne Hunter is with Platinum Home Warranty and is a great resource for any home warranty questions. Let me know if you'd like their contact information or just Google them. You don't want to miss talking to these two amazing ladies. And I have got an exciting offer for you or maybe for someone you know. I'm finishing up the advanced part of my coaching certification program. It's called Applied Coaching, and it's where I demonstrate that I am able to apply all the coaching concepts and tools in real live coaching sessions with real live clients. One of my program requirements for February 2020 is to offer 20-minute video coaching sessions. Then I'll submit one of those recorded coaching sessions each week so that my coaching can be evaluated. You or someone you know, can have one of these 20-minute video coaching sessions for the very reasonable price of free. (laughs) But let me tell you, these sessions are actually worth hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars. And even though we'll only be in our video call together for about 20 minutes, the effect and outcome of our coaching will last much longer, maybe for the rest of your life. There are a limited number of these free sessions, and they're only available for a limited time. So if this sounds interesting to you at all, go to bexb.org slash 20 to zero to see the calendar and schedule your free video coaching session. So that's bexb.org slash two zero bexb.org slash 20. And yes, please share this offer with someone you know who might benefit from 20 minutes of coaching. We can get so much done in just 20 minutes. And that's it for this episode. I wanted to share those two announcements with you and the five Zumba lessons because I think they are so helpful in life, not just Zumba. Now, I want to hear your thoughts and your reactions. Do you see these metaphors for your life in your everyday experiences, in your workout? Do you have a no crying rule where sometimes you do cry? Send me an email at hi at bexby.org or find me on social media and leave a comment or a question. In next week's episode, I am going to tell you about one of my favorite teachers, Brooke Castillo. This brilliant woman has given me so much and has inspired me and motivated me and entertained me. And if you've never heard of her before, I am excited to introduce you. If you do already know who she is, I cannot wait to tell you what I love about her 
and then compare notes with you. For all of my favorites this week, meaning that you're on my email list, I went ahead and included one more of those 10 lessons that I learned from Zumba. So you have a bonus lesson in your email this week along with the episode. I hated to cut it from the episode, so go read it so that you don't miss out. If you're not on my email list yet, make sure that you join so that you don't miss out on all the fun extras that I share with all of my favorite people. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about my Zumba journey, and I will talk to you next week. This has been Release Your Resistance. Thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, make sure you are subscribed and please leave me a review on iTunes. If you'd like to continue this conversation one-on-one or in real time, come visit me on my site at bexb.org to see how we can work together. 